Welcome to a special episode of Beyond the Roundup. On today's show, we're going to discuss a story about two teenage boys who suddenly died just a few days after their second vaccination dose. It's another set of cases where myocarditis has reared its ugly head post-vaccination. We're going to discuss what happened here. And so, from Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and our episode starts now. It's a terrible story where two teenage boys who, separately, were found dead in their beds three and four days after taking their second doses of the Pfizer-BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. And according to a February 15th autopsy, it appears likely that they died from toxic myocarditis. This from a clinical and autopsy early release study in the Archives of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine of the College of American Pathologists. Now, one of the boys who had a history of attention hyperactivity deficit disorder, or ADHD, died after initially complaining about gastric distress and headaches. Now, just before his death, he had reported to feeling better, but was found dead in his bed not long after. The other boy in this story was reportedly obese and had reported no symptoms prior to being found dead in his bed as well. Of worth noting here, neither boy was known to be infected by the coronavirus. And so, autopsies were conducted by the Connecticut Office of the Chief Medical Examiner, or the OCME, and the Michigan Institute of Forensic Science and Medicine, which investigate suspected unnatural deaths in their respective jurisdictions. Now, the examiner was Dr. James R. Gill, who is the Chief Medical Examiner of the OCME, and he determined that both boys suffered from toxic myocarditis. In addition, microscopic examination of tissue samples revealed findings that are not the alteration seen with typical myocarditis. And so, we reached out to the Connecticut Chief Examiner to speak to us about the autopsy findings. And Dr. Gill, who is also an associate professor of clinical pathology at Yale School of Medicine, explained to us that the first boy had suffered a previously undiagnosed myocardial fibrosis or heart tissue scarring, which may have led to his heart failure and death. This victim was known to have attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but was believed to be otherwise healthy. Dr. Gill told us that he was unable to definitively determine what caused the scarring. One theory on the matter is that it may have started with the initial vaccine dose and healed over time. However, when the second dose was introduced into the system, it may have worsened the condition. Meanwhile, the autopsy report also noted that the second boy, who was obese, had suffered from a previously undiagnosed cardiac hypertrophy, which is an adaptive response to pressure or volume stress that accompanies many forms of heart disease. Now, while hypertrophy and fibrosis were considered secondary contributors in their deaths, Dr. Gill is confident that acute myocardial injury was the primary factor. Now, the boys suffered heart inflammation not found in typical myocarditis. Ultimately, Dr. Gill determined that toxic myocarditis was a factor in both deaths. His report stated that microscopic examination of tissue samples from the young victims revealed features resembling a catecholamine-induced injury, not typical myocarditis pathology. Dr. Gill went on to explain, in our interview with him, that catecholamines such as adrenaline, norepinephrine, and dopamine help the body respond to fight-or-flight situations. But when there is a problematic relationship between catecholamines and cytokines, they can result in what is known as a feedback loop. And this loop can generate cytokine storms that cause excessive adrenal responses and ultimately damaging inflammation. Dr. Gill said, in reference to these two teenage boys that died recently, that the big thing is you are seeing that area of heart muscle injury, which is separate from where the inflammation is. Typically with viral myocarditis, the inflammation is driving the damage to the muscle cells. In this case, we are seeing the damaged muscle cells driving some of the inflammation. Now, myocarditis is described by the United States Centers for Disease Control as inflammation of the heart muscle. That is the result of an infection or some other trigger. When triggered by COVID-19 vaccination, symptoms typically begin within a week of the second dose. 
These include chest pain, shortness of breath, and feelings of a fast beating or pounding heart. According to the CDC, most patients with post-vaccine myocarditis responded well to medicine and rest and felt better quickly. Now, the CDC's official stance on the vaccine is that they recommend that children 5 and older receive the vaccine to avoid contracting SARS-CoV-2 and possibly severe complications, including hospitalizations and death from COVID-19. However, some doctors find cardiac complications in teens, which is normally an exceedingly rare occurrence, to be concerning when they are associated with COVID vaccinations. Young people have a relatively low risk for severe COVID-19 illness, and yet post-vaccination heart complications can be deadly. On the other hand, health authorities have claimed that long-term cases of COVID pose a considerable risk as well. Now, Dr. Gill suggests that doctors should track at-risk groups more closely after vaccination here. Meanwhile, Dr. Gill said he hopes his study will prompt clinicians to track post-vaccination periods in children more closely. He said that at this point, it's kind of now in the clinician's hands to see would this change any of their thought processes. He suggested that doctors could order different types of blood tests and monitor changes more closely following vaccination for this at-risk group. In the meantime, we of course will be keeping an eye on these kinds of reports as they happen. And that, my friends, brings our episode to a close once more. From Trial Site News, I am Adrian, and I will see you all next time.